Um, so, hi everyone. Um, so, I'm Chris Pearcy, the talent acquisition manager for AO.com. Um, so, I wanted to do a talk about kind of the benefits of uh, collaborative hiring. I've been looking into this a lot over the last, um, well, last year, I suppose. And um, if I give you a bit of a brief kind of intro into to who I am, so I've been with AO for, for coming on to four years now. Um, my my background is mostly IT recruitment um, until the last three years where it's kind of broadened out um, to, to a lot more of the retail space and and like pretty much everyone else I kind of fell into recruitment didn't really know what it was um, until I started and, and eventually on the agency side didn't like sending spec CVs didn't like, uh, really wanted to get internal um, and, and be part of a, a growing business and I went through um, an RPO working on the Deutsche Bank account to then working for, for AO initially in their IT recruitment team and and, and now managing the, the wider recruitment team. So I'll give you a bit of an idea on some of the stuff that I'll be going through and, and, and talking about. And if, if anyone has any questions, and, and, and please just either, either shout, talk, just talk up, shout out. Um, I'm happy to field them as and when and then. There's probably room for for discussion at the end and um, to talk about it in a bit more more detail. So we'll look at why we're talking about collaborative hiring and what it actually is. A um, couple of examples of, of of other companies that are doing it and what we're doing and um, how we're kind of training for that and 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 training for success. Um, and then just a few kind of key takeaways at the end. So. So for us and, and like a lot of companies that have kind of established the general recruitment teams, we've got some pretty ambitious growth plans um, and we know that, that our people are going to be the enablers of achieving this. Um, so I suppose when it, when it comes to the hiring process, we've got to ensure that we're constantly raising the bar on the level of talent that we're bringing in. Um, I suppose we, we want to be the pioneers in, in how we recruit diverse, amazing talent, but to bring this this kind of talent in, we need to find them and, and, and attract them. So we need our hiring managers, I suppose, to be we've got we need them to be driven at each stage of the recruitment process. Um, we need them to be able to attract and seek out amazing talent, but but really challenge themselves to find people who are who are going to be stronger and, and potentially their own capability. Um, you know, this, it may sound a scary prospect for some but ultimately it'll drive their own development and progression within the business as well. So one thing that we found was that hiring processes, like, like in a lot of companies, are varied across the group. And while we've got some really refined and well-known processes, still some hiring decisions being made in isolation where a candidate might only be exposed to one hiring manager to assess their suitability. And, and this can result in incomplete summary of the candidate's skills and, and capabilities. So, what is it then? Let, let's let's have a chat about what collaborative hiring is. And before I really kind of looked into this and, and, and what it was, I, I presumed it was basically just about bringing a load more people in a room, adding another stage to the process, like having a coffee with the team or, or something like that. But surprisingly, it's not. Um, so, what collaborative hiring is um, basically is a a team-based approach to sourcing and assessing talent and I can't stress the word sourcing enough as well because that word can get put on at times and like like what I presumed I, I just thought it was about having more people involved in assessing a candidate and um, yeah it will allow the candidate to meet more employees but there's a lot more that can be done and and we'll talk about some of the key benefits um, in a bit but one of them is, is that it's going to give you a diverse and well-rounded in finding, attracting and, and sourcing talent. Ultimately, we need to take into account who can have an impact and at, at what stage. So, I've tried to summarise what, what the key stages are um, and where employees can have an impact. So, there's that pre-requisition stage. So, this is about who we get involved on reviewing and adjusting job description templates, creating candidate personas and job adverts. We know obviously that those that work in, in the position you're looking to fill know better than, than anyone else 
um, and they can provide some really great ideas in, in, in selling that job. Um, sourcing, so who can we go to for referrals, whose personal networks can we tap into and how. Um, someone once said to me, put your employees on a pedestal and sprinkle them with glitter. Um, so we know that the content created or shared by employees goes so much better than, than something that brand would post or, or even a recruiter. Um, and, and it's that authenticity, I suppose. Um, and, and that leads quite nicely on to, to how we attract. Um, but it's about presenting a collaborative company culture and, and, and showcasing the team and the company. So you could look at asking the team to um, write blogs, post videos, pictures, or, or even having them attending meetups or, or kind of relevant community events. And, and, and you know what, go with them. Um, and then next stage is um, assessing. So agree, we, the really important part of this is agreeing and defining what you're really looking for um, and, and making sure that everyone involved is, is aligned. So understand who can be integrated into this process and make sure it's clear what they're there to assess. Um, I've seen processes before where, I, when, I, when I joked earlier about the cooking a lot of people in a room and having a coffee to meet the team, usually and typically that they're there to assess um that, that that employees values and 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 almost the way they they inter interact with each other so what that isn't um a, a platform to assess is competency-based skills so it's just making sure that everyone's aligned and it needs to be a real streamlined and and, and transparent for all um and, and most companies are, are kind of moving this way now but it's got to be aligned to, to any kind of company values and, and which is something that we at AO uh, recruit really heavily off. So I think we need to think about the diversity of the hiring team as well um, and how they may work alongside this person. So uh, it, it kind of takes me back to what I mentioned earlier about regarding who should be involved. So I suppose, oh my bad, um, where am I yet? So, Let's take the example of a talent acquisition partner. Uh, we're, that's who we're recruiting into the team. Um, who would we involve in a collaborative approach for that? So we've obviously got the recruitment team because after all, they're, they're going to be working with this person really closely and the way that they work is likely to be really aligned. But there's also the wider people function. So most talent acquisition partners work really closely with um, HR and employee relations, L&D. Um, you might have a reward function. The um, employee brand um, stakeholders is, is, is always a, a really interesting one as well. So some of the hiring managers of specific departments that this person might be working closely with and recruiting into. So there's, there's always plenty of options um, on who can really be involved in, in that hiring team. And when we're assessing each person involved at this stage, it's really important that they should share their impressions on every candidate. Because if, if we have everyone's opinion, we're able to achieve a more kind of in-depth, detailed assessment of every candidate. So this will this will help choose the best candidate, not only for your position, but also to your team and, and, and towards the company's values as well. And, and ultimately, having more people sharing their perspectives will help you avoid any unconscious biases and, and really improve that hiring diversity. And then finally, that boarding stage so you've got pre-boarding and onboarding and it's, it's such an essential and, and delicate stage of the recruitment process that i always say that and, and i'm sure people agree that the job's just not done when the candidates accepted the offer it's a really it, that, especially that pre-boarding stage where they've handed their notice in that, that and they're almost in no man's land where there might be a couple of other recruiters that are still trying to headhunt them there might be a, another opportunity that now they've handed the notice in, they might just explore as a backup. So we've got to be really careful here and we need to work together with the relevant people um, across the business and, and usually within the hiring team to ensure that the candidate um, is set up for success. Um, so, you know, th these people likely have a lot to learn um, and they may need to adjust. Um, so this collaborative process should really continue right from before the roles even been signed off when we're looking at how we're going to 
attract them with an advert right through to a one to thirty of them integrating into the business. Um, so, what are the benefits then? So, uh, increasing employee engagement. So we're involving them and listening to them um, right from the start, and and we're almost challenging them to say, you know, help us attract the best people. Um, the candidate is going to um, is going to experience a real true view of the company and the people they're working with, and uh, more people's thoughts, inputs, and decisions will, will will likely limit unconscious bias and encourage more kind of diversity of thought. The the team are going to be aligned, the business is aligned, so it'll, it'll steer a better process and hiring results that can ultimately prove attrition and and, and even their advocacy which is which is something that if we can if we can improve our employee advocacy in the way that they are socially present um, it, 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 it will do such a job for the recruiters and we we often say about um, make the hiring manager and the hiring team the recruiters let them be the recruiter and, and we'll talk a little bit about that again and, and how we utilize people's networks and and um, referral schemes and things like that. But as we encourage more diversity through our own processes, we'll ultimately attract a more diverse talent pool and, and hires, which which will only improve that culture further. So who's doing it then? So this is I, I found this bit really interesting because of the, the different ways you can be collaborative and and what I found more there's a lot more information around the companies do it from an interview perspective. Um, so, Pret and Monge, um, so basically the team decides to take that person on. So, once somebody has passed the initial screening, they work um, a day in one of the branches. So, at the end of the day, all the staff in that branch will take a vote on whether to take them on permanently. That's quite, that's quite oh, I think it's more of an extreme version and, and quite daunting in some respects because. Um, one year, if you're successful, you know that actually the whole team have voted you to be that that that, that success. But if you don't get the job, then <laughs> you know that, that 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 full team have voted that way. So it, that, that that's one way of 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 collaborative hiring. Facebook, they they check the team dynamic, and I, I I like this. So Facebook likes to get a candidate to work with several other designers to evaluate the team dynamic. So they look over one another's work, provide feedback, and get to see what they like to work with in practice. And our design team do something very similar. So they, as part of the, the recruitment process for, for UX designers, we we get them to do a whiteboard session with the team and they, they're given a, a, a task collaboratively to say, right, sky's the limits, this is the design, go and solve this problem. And they'll all work together. And, and we're almost trying to encourage the team um, to, to come up with a design together and, 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 and really own it. And it, they get the opportunity then to see how that person interacts and engages with the wider team in a bit more of a, a relaxed environment. Um, and then you've got Zappos. Um, so for their key is culture fit. And um, so as well as interviewing, candidates will, candidates will go through like a social test. And that will be by attending some type of department meeting and, and getting others interacting um, informally with them. So a similar sort of concept to what Facebook do with, with getting the designers in to, to, to look at team dynamic. But I, I've always thought, if, if we relate this back to recruiting a, a talent acquisition partner into the team, so an example might be of bringing them into um, an, a, a meeting with your ATS provider, perhaps to um, talk about some of the, the, the new features on the system and, and seeing how they interact, the questions they ask, that kind of thing. So that, that's, I suppose that's an example Reverting back to, to how we would recruit um, a talent acquisition partner. So for us at AO, we want to be clear in that the recruitment process, it, it should be as much as about giving them a, a, a positive picture of our company, whether or not they get the job, um, as solely meeting our own needs. So I suppose we'll, we'll go on to what, what we're doing um, and creating a, a hiring team. So at AO, our kind of collaborative hiring approach is, is is designed to ensure that we're we're really as effective as possible when it comes to talent ac attraction and selection. So the focus of collaborative hiring is about creating really highly effective hiring teams that 
that are aligned and, and really engaged with the process as well. So we'll we'll we're, we're working on a, a stream of work where we will talk to the rest of the business around similar stuff to what we are now about why what collaborative hiring is and, and the benefits and, and why we're doing it. But basically, it's designed on the principle that widening the hiring team outside of just the recruiter and the hiring manager allows us to open our networks further, attract wider, and and, and see a more rounded view of the candidate. And again ensuring we're making that sound hiring decision while while also limiting any any biases and then it's about kind of who makes the cut so hiring or the way that, that i see it and, and that we talk about it is hiring ao is a privilege and it it should be approached with a sense of pride so these aos are representing the company and its values and they'll play a huge part in in delivering a real awesome experience for those considering a career with us Hiring teams um, should include people who have interactions with new employees across all levels within the department and business areas. So, um, where relevant, wider departments across the organisation, even customers, peers, senior managers, team members, anyone that will work alongside these people, and even more junior members. And when we talk about a diverse hiring team, you know, you might want someone that's, that's more junior in their journey so they see the process you might want a stakeholder from the business or potentially even a customer depending on what that customer relationship is um, and ultimately these these people should be really carefully selected based on their ability to bring like fresh thinking to the process and be comfortable to the challenge um they, they, they're considered to be high performing or, or built kind of high performing teams but after all the hiring team they're the gatekeeper to what or they will be the gatekeeper to our culture so we the other culture that we're building and, and and finding people who share our values is, is only going to grow that further so it, it, i go on to how we need to get everyone kind of engaged and, and and aligned to this so we're going through what what that training for success will be so a well-assembled hiring team is, is really the catalyst to, to achieving um, hiring excellence, I suppose. Um, but to maximise the effectiveness of, of this, collaborative hiring teams, um, there'll be a series of kind of short sessions that we're looking to guide hiring managers through on, on what best practice should be, um, or at least what it should be for, for AO. So the, the first thing that, that, that we've gone through is, is, is around um, we want to create a more inclusive and uh, effective recruitment process and by educating our AOs on, on common kind of unconscious biases. So there are many, there's, there's many different forms of bias that, that may prevent the hiring team from connecting with the right candidates and to reduce this we, we're going to train our AOs or we are training our AOs to, to recognise and reduce such biases. And, and a big a big part of this is is by slowing down the decision making, questioning the reasons behind such decisions, and, and working with others in the recruitment process will will ultimately dilute that potential unconscious bias. And when I say slowing down the decision making, what what I, I, I want to emphasise is we don't want to slow down the process, and and that's throughout the whole journey as well. So we know that it's war on talent. Um, we have to be fast and we have to react to, to to get the best people what what collaborative hiring shouldn't do is slow the process down um, and and that's one thing that i think in the current situation we're all in with with the pandemic we we we've, we've reacted and adapted to a lot of online um ways of assessing and and, and interviewing whether that's um video or, or or specific tools and and i think that's We've certainly learned a lot from the benefits and of that with regards to that pace and efficiency of being able to get people into the process. The, the next stage is, is that preparing for success. So we need to define hiring team, as, as I mentioned, and this will be made up of um, and, and who that whole hiring team gather and work together on reviewing and adjusting them job descriptions. And, and like I said previously, we need to create what good looks like and, and building our candidate personas as well. Um, we, we work quite closely with our employee brand manager to, to really identify what our, our personas are for, for different departments, which, which ultimately will make us or help us produce 
really awesome job adverts aimed at, at attracting the best and there's a, there's a lot in this around the difference between a, a job advert and a job description and you know a job advert meant to attract people and, and not detract and by understanding the candidates personas where they hang out what they're interested in will also guide us on on where we might advertise or where we might um, look at different talent pools and communities and again like those AOs that work in the same position as the one that we're looking to build they'll know it better than anyone else around the tasks and the duties that are required um, and they'll be the best at selling it and one of the really simple things to do is just ask them why they love working at AO so what is it that they love about the job what drives them to, to, to come to work and give their best and what they like about the team and, and everything about that that's what we should see in an advert the job description is is more around what your accountabilities are what you're going to be responsible for how you're going to be managed and, and really making sure that our our hiring managers and hiring teams are, are, are aware of this and, and, and skilled on it. Um, sourcing the best talent. Um, so the hiring team and as a minimum, the hiring manager should drive the promotion of, of AO in, in, like employee referral programs. We I mentioned earlier, we want to turn all AOs, all, all our AOs into recruiters and and um, ambassadors and 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 let's call them social butterflies. So we want them to be interacting in the community. We want them to be, have a have an online presence. And there's a, you've got to be really careful that it's not forced. And and but actually they want to do that. So we know that our people are, are instrumental in finding in the best candidates within their own personal networks and um, sharing job posts on their social media profiles. And there was a, a stat I found that it can reach up to 561% more further than the same message shared on a, a brand owned channel. Um, so we want them to really showcase that collaborative company culture, celebrate teamwork and and showcase the team's expertise, um, which is really kind of conducive to tapping into a wider passive audience. And um, a really great example of that is, um, I think she's on the phone, it's actually Fiona has worked closely with some of our BAs in, in writing a, a blog post um, as, a, as a kind of collaborative effort between herself and the BAs and things like that are, are always going to add so much more value and those passive candidates will start taking note more and then when someone from AO or the recruiter does interact with them it's going to be that warmer, that warmer call, that warmer conversation. Um, then we need to look at an assessment and selection right. So really establishing that clear hiring criteria and defining the, the key must-haves and nice-haves for a certain position. It, it, it's a critical task of the hiring manager, I think, and they, we, we need to put that responsibility onto them. Um, then from this, the hiring teams can establish the right kind of collaborative selection process for the role um, so whether that is like the the whiteboard session that the designers do or getting that person into a, a meeting and it might just be something a bit more straightforward as just having a couple more people in the interview it doesn't have to be um something so far removed from what your current processes look like you're ultimately you don't want to over complicate it but it needs to be um, adaptable as well for, for certain people. I know that, and I can't remember the company that do it, but the, the candidate can ultimately choose their um, assessment process. So whether they want to do a video call or come in face to face, whether their task involves a presentation or um, writing a paper or, or designing or whatever that might be, they can choose their journey. And I really like that aspect of it. Um, but I'm off on a bit of a tangent there, but basically hearing out all the feedback from the hiring team is we're able to achieve a more in-depth, detailed assessment of every candidate as well, which is really important when we're trying to move away from that hiring in isolation. So this is going to help in selecting the best candidate, not only for the role, but for the team and for AO and everyone will be sharing their perspectives and it, again it'll avoid any unconscious biases and, and it should improve the hiring diversity and I've, I've mentioned these unconscious biases a lot and, and this can 
this can happen at any stage in the process from um it, you know when you when you're if you're video interviewing it, it could it be the, the the environment that the candidate sat in um we we showed the, the video from the i don't know if you remember from the bbc news when um the the child walked in in the background of the guy presenting and um the, the, the news uh, erupted around it and, and presumed it was the, the, the man the, the, the man that was talking, they presumed it was his nanny, um, for the children's nanny, uh, when in fact it was his wife and there was unconscious biases around the thought process of why we thought that person was, was, was the nanny. So we talk around things like that, we talk around um, even just basically looking at a CV and the unconscious biases around why someone might not have been in a role for so long why someone might have applied for the role when they live 50, 60, 100 miles away. We, we, we can't presume um, and we need to understand these kind of things. The, someone's name, someone's hobbies, all these different things that can and affect that, that bias uh, or that unconscious bias. It might, it might be conscious bias, but, but still we hope not. Um, and then that continuous delivery as well. So talk, talk then about pre-boarding and on onboarding have been so essential and, and delicate stages and um, some of the best practices that, that we've seen from successfully taking people through that pre and onboarding process can be um, things like pre programs, basic things like introducing new AOs to, to other teams, department, team lunches, there's, there's even just that communication, the pre-boarding stage around letting people know, um, hey, we, we're working on this project at the minute. By the time you get here, we'll be at the, we'll just be about ready to roll out. So here, here's a bit of a background on it. Look forward to, to any thoughts on it. Um, engaging them in any way possible. I know it's difficult now with 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 lockdown and, and COVID, but previously it might be. Do you know what we go for? We go for years off some food on a Friday come and join us or if you've got a day off come in, come and nip in for a coffee or, or in a pool whatever whatever facilities you've got um, so it's really about that constant communication and it's a really great tools that can help with that because I appreciate if you're if you're, if you're recruiting in I was gonna say in bulk, or high volume if you're recruiting high volume um, it can be that can be really challenging and difficult to give every person that, that level of service that's joining the business and and that's why you need to engage in, in your your hiring teams as well so the hiring manager the people within that person's team the people they might be working with around the business and and also there's some great tools um if you if, if any of you are fortunate to have invested in a, a an, an onboarding platform that can automate some of this stuff as well that, that's a really a great benefit to that, that that candidate's experience. So the I suppose some some real kind of high level key takeaways from that. I appreciate I tend to talk really fast and, and go on a few different tangents and then repeat myself. So I thought this might just make it a little bit clearer at the end, but it it's really about attracting and assessing. So not just that assessing stage which which I was guilty of before really looking into this in, in more detail. We need to be looking at how we're attracting these people, where we're attracting them from. Once we get them in, how are we assessing them? Is it aligned? And um, are we are we are we looking for the for the right the right attributes, the right values, the right skill sets? Um, and it's about I love that, that that idea of hiring for your company it should be a privilege, and you should be proud to be representing your your company. Um, and and that challenge of trying to attract someone and that case that I think in recruitment most, most of us will, will enjoy that part that that, hunt, that next person and that case and, and that when you eventually get that offer accepted and you know the journey you've been on sometimes to get that person that, that's that's what you should want for the rest of the team to to feel and, and be absorbed in as well and and that once a high has been made you know that actually. We're excited this person's joining. They're going to make an impact. And you know what? They're, um, they're going to stay. They're going to be there in 12, 24, 36 months' time, still still chomping at this bit, still driven to work for the company. Um, 
one thing that we, we, we really want to kind of move away from as well is that hiring shouldn't be made in isolation because you've got one person's opinions and one person's view and that that you will never be able to improve the, 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 the diversity and culture within the team or it will be a lot more difficult anyway um, if it's just one person's thoughts and one person's opinions so being able to to involve more people it really help um, look at it from different angles attract different people um, and and really improve that inclusivity within the process as well and then the, the, the other thing everyone needs to be aligned and um, so we need to guide our hiring managers and the hiring teams on what that best practice is for you as your company um, and that that's the challenge because we like we, we, we kind of know different hiring managers have different perceptions on how they should recruit, what they should be looking for, what that process should be. So it's about having a, a real flexible and adaptable process that's not uh, almost a one size fits all. Um, we know that recruiting in IT is very different to recruiting in um, the contact centre or in logistics and or, or even in, in other countries. Um, so we, we need to be able to make sure that we're working alongside them, really partnering and consulting them on this process. Um, one of the things that we're doing is, is, is working a lot more closely with our HR business partners as well in, 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 in their buy-in. And hiring at AO at the minute is such a big thing anyway that everyone is so bought into it and needs to be, and it has to be a priority for the business. And that, I suppose, that's... That's it, really. Um, that's a bit of a whistle stop tour on my journey with collaborative, collaborative hiring at the minute and kind of what my perceptions were of it at, at first, and then what I've learned, the benefits, and how we're now rolling that out across the across the business. Um, so yeah, thanks for, for listening. <laughs> Thanks for that, Chris. Um, I just wanted to check whether we had um, any questions from people, and um, I think we might have a, a question. Are you able to see it in the chat, or would you like me to just um, explain it? Oh, um, I hadn't seen it, no. So I'd be interested to know about when this approach breaks, what are the um, causes of the breakdown, and how are those breakdowns um, in the approach mended. Um, so one of the one of the ways it breaks, and I, I really um, or something that we found, is that one of the challenges is understanding when our stakeholders are going to be recruiting. So in most cases, we have really good relationships with our stakeholders where we know what's going to be happening, where we're told about vacancies before they become vacancies, but we know that that's not always the case, and we. For this to really work, we have to have them engaged and we, we have to work with our business partners or, or whoever the relevant person is, so our acquisition partner, to, um, to try and be a bit more proactive, which is easier said than done, I know that. Um, some of the pushback we've had is we're, the typical, we're too busy, we, you know, we, we haven't got the time to, to have everyone involved and, and this is why it does need to be flexible and it's there's no kind of as long as I would encourage that if you've got your recruiter involved throughout the process, which they usually are, not not necessarily in the interview process, but partnering on the process. If the hiring manager and at least someone within their team is involved as a minimum, we, we've we've kind of set a core principle now where you you, you you cannot you cannot recruit in isolation. You have to involve other people. Um, and the, the hardest thing is when it's a, a last minute requirement you need them yesterday, which most, most requirements are. But, um, it, it, you've just got to capture it as early as possible. And if you've missed the first stage around the, the job advert and creating that piece and using a, it's so easy just to use a generic um, job advert that's been used previously, but actually, especially at AO, the business is changing week on week, month on month, year on year. This isn't the same business as it was a couple of months ago, never mind six, 12 months ago. But we just need to be adaptable with it. 
Um, so I'm also interested in how AO. Oh, wait a second. I'm also interested in how AO use technology to support this approach, which is a difficult department to apply this approach to. So COVID was 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 a massive challenge as it's itself. So we're going on a real journey with our high volume stuff at the minute, where we used to do assessment centres uh, for like our contact centre, our driver recruitment, that kind of stuff. Um, so we're going on a a, a a journey at the minute, and it's it's we're still not we're not there yet. But one of the things that we're we're looking at is one: how do we make our process more efficient? First of all, to a, a, a assess people from a pre-screening stage and then on to kind of a um, a more gamification, straw personality of values approach. Um, so there's not a lot of collaboration you can do with that. Um, and obviously, when we used to do the, the assessment days, that was it. It was a real a great opportunity for, for collaboration where we had a few different people from the department involved in that day and interacting in, in some way or another. And we found that really difficult when when COVID hit and we we're all working remote. So we have started to look at um, video interviewing um, or pre sorry pre recorded video interviewing as an assessment tool, um, and then having um, almost a panel to to, to assess them um, video interviews and it's that's going to be well, well we're hoping that's going to be rolled out in by the end of the year which is it's you know we're looking at that for our logistics arm as well um it is really difficult um to collaborate from a physical perspective in the climate we're in so that's why we need to look at it from the rest of the, 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 the stages of the process that, that we've utilised collaboration in. So whether that's that pre-requisition stage where you're working on how we're going to attract these people and um, how the hiring teams can, can really embed and, and, and assist in that. And, and then the other stage of, of, of that onboard, pre-boarding and onboarding. Um, so there's loads of onboarding tools that, that can be used that like uh, Apical, um, M border uh, is, is another tool. A lot of ATS systems as well can, will, will have that integrated within the system. Uh, that's one of the things that we're looking at at the minute is, is, is a more um, effective onboarding or pre-boarding and onboarding tool. Um, do you use psychometrics or other systems? So that's one thing that we're looking at now and um, that we're in the process of kind of agreeing P's and C's with is, is around an assessment tool and of, there's that many out there and, and they've all got a slight different edge so you've got the real kind of psychometric focus ones where like your arctic shores where you, you, you're doing a lot of game based assessment um, and then you've got the more kind of values based scenario focus ones and you've, it's about what's going to fit your company and, and, and your culture as well. I found that there's, there's so many companies that do the same sort of product, but how, do, how, how are their values aligned to, to what your company's values and, and culture is? So we're, we're looking at um, a solution that is more um, personality trait based for our more operational roles. Um, and that should be, we're literally at final stages now of, of rolling that out. And that's the kind of the next kind of tool that we're investing in, that alongside the, the onboarding uh, side to it. Um, do you have some stats how this approach has changed, for example, time to hire retention diversity? So I haven't got stats on it yet. We're collating them stats as we've rolled it out because it's we've only come to the rollout stage of it in the last few months. Um, so we don't have enough data to really understand how that has, has improved. We, we do know that our um, kind of satisfaction, hiring satisfaction has increased. Um, we are at a position yet where we can determine has that retention increased in, in specific areas. I'm, I'm fairly confident it will, especially in, in some of the areas that we've had them sorts of challenges. Um, but until we've done this for another six 12 months, we can really look back and analyse the, the, the results of this. 
we're already seeing from our hiring managers uh, a change in mindset in how they recruit and what they look for and that kind of association that it's a two-way street it's not just us assessing them that there's a lot even in in the, the current climate we're in there's still a lot of competition out there and um, so that's something that we have seen a, a dramatic change in but the actual stats behind it we're still we're still kind of monitoring and analyzing them um and i think that was the last question it's it's still work in progress and, and it's always adapting and and i think that's the beauty of collaborative hiring there's no one way or right way of doing it i think that as long as you have some agreed responsibilities between you and the hiring team or, 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 or there's three three areas really there's the responsibilities of you as the the recruiter or the talent acquisition partner there's the responsibility of the hiring manager within this process and then there's the responsibility of the hiring team and and it's how that's all agreed at the start uh, and it's about practice and 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 working that into your process and it becoming just a it's almost embedded in, in everything that you do as a as a as a consultant to, to the hiring team. Great, thanks. Thanks for that. I think you got all the questions there. Um, I've had some really good answers. So, um, is there anything else that you feel that needs to be mentioned? Or I forget what I've said half the time. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, same. Yeah, to be fair. A quick question, if, if that's all right. Um, okay, there. Um, yeah, thanks for all that. I, I, uh, I just want, was wondering, um, I mean, I've had a, well, a couple of situations before where hiring managers wanted to be super collaborative, so they involve as a wide amount of people as possible, um, and then when it gets to trying to make an offer or, or decide on a candidate, <clears throat> um, well, what, what happened was the... Um, you know, the, 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 the team basically were absolutely convinced that it wasn't the right candidate. And then the hiring manager and the senior manager were like, actually, we think they are the right candidate. So I, I wanted to if you ever get in a situation where it's kind of harder to land on a decision because more people like, like are looking for things that are wrong kind of thing. Or don't know if you ever find that. Yeah. So we've had similar situations um, previously before we've kind of become a bit more structured with this, where it goes back to what that person's role in assessing this candidate as well so are they assessing a specific element of it so that the, how they think they can work with that candidate and, and fit in the team are they assessing their um capability to do the role the, the, their skill set um or it, what sounds like in your in your situation are they, they assessing the, the, the whole package as as well as others i think that this, this probably should be a limit on who's involved in that assessment and, and decision-making process. Um, it, it is really difficult and ultimately, I think that it depends how bold you want to be as well. So we, we're not there yet, but I want to be in, in the, at the position where if it's not 100% agreed, it's not a hire. But that's a, I suppose that's a luxury position to be in and it's, it's, it's going to be very rare that that's the case. But if that can be the goal where this person will not be hired unless everyone is, is comfortable. And, and I know that some of the pushbacks that you might get around that are, are around, well, look, this is an urgent hire. We need this person in quick. This person's got the skill set, but there's always a danger then that that person being hired, if the wider team aren't as receptive to that hiring, don't think that's the right fit, that person's already set up to fail. That they're going to come in. I mean, they won't know it, but the team will, will say, well, we didn't want this person. Yeah, they might be proved wrong and the person might fit. It comes down to understanding why they don't feel that that person's the right person. Um, and actually, is, are they really aligned with what the hiring, the hiring manager and the hiring manager's manager are looking for? That It looks like there might be a bit of um, alignment there. So it, it, we, that's why we've got really kind of this is what we need from a skill set perspective. This is what we need from um, uh, a values fit. And I, I want to say we need to kind of focus on values fit as opposed to culture fit. Because if we're looking to, to, to fit in with our culture, we're only looking for 
people, or, or from experience I've seen, we're only looking for people that um, are my culture, that, that is me. And that, that's what you get with hiring in isolation. You get hiring managers that will recruit the same person over and over again. Um, it's very common in sales environments where you'll see a sales team and they're all they're, they're all the same person. Um, one area that's re usually really great at doing that is, is tech. They, they usually get a really good diverse culture within there, but that's one of the challenges is, is, is if someone's isolation around hiring, then, then they're only going to hire them, the same person over and over again, and that team will never develop um, or, or generate new ideas if they haven't got that diversity. Um, it is really challenging. Um, but I think it just comes back to realigning what you need from the values of that person. What are they going to add to the team? What are they going to, what are they potentially going to attract from the team? Take away, are they going to, is there some of the concerns from the team around um, stability within the, the group that are together at the minute? Or are they, is it going, is it going to negatively affect people's development or the, the, the team's growth? Or, or it, it all depends on what, what the reasons are, I suppose, but it, that's a really common thing, or it has been previously, and that's one thing that we are starting to see an improvement in is, is we're seeing a reduction in conversations where I want him, well, you're not having him, or we don't want him, but we are having him. Um, worst people are your own department, the people team, the HR team, or whatever you call them, they're the worst for sticking to process and to sticking to a way of working. And and everyone I speak to say the same thing. It's it's always the people team. And I think um I think I rant with, with most people around that at times, around the, the people that go out of the process and my own my own peers and colleagues. So that's that's where you've just got to get, try and work as closely together as, as you can. Um, funny enough, that, that hire didn't end up working out, funnily enough, so the, the team were proven right, so there, there you go. <laughs> and that's it, and that's why it's so important to, to, to have, because it just would set, it's, 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 you're not setting yourself up for success. Yeah, definitely. Oh, great, thanks for that. No, it's, it's, a, it's a really good conversation to have, and I, 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 part of me wasn't going to do a presentation and wanted to have it more of an open conversation, but... It's really difficult to do if you don't know how many people are going to be on the call. Um, so with us, like the so I can see six of us now. That's an a real ideal one to kind of talk about what are people doing, what are the challenges people are finding, um, and that that conversation, that question you've asked alone, that could take great conversation with thirty minutes of talking yeah. about people's yeah. experiences in that in that area. Yeah, definitely. Oh, that's really so, interesting. Thanks for that. Yeah, thank you for that, Chris. And I think. Again, this is something that's going to be um, something people probably have an interest on an ongoing basis, really. So I suppose the chance for us to do this again um, could could happen early next year. And obviously we can speak about that. So, um, yeah, I definitely think with the amount of people on the call as well, it's a good way of um, sort of having a discussion, really. So thank yeah, you. And I think, I think from a stats perspective as well, because I know that that's obviously a really key thing that people are interested in. By that point, we'll be able to talk about that in, in a lot more detail around actually, this is what we have seen from a longer term perspective. Yeah, definitely. There's a question there from Michael. Does the process help identify learning needs in, in the existing employees? Um, is that in, res, in regards to learning needs in regards to recruitment or, or in regards to their own development within their own role? Right. Okay. Um, so, does the process have an element? So, as it, it, yeah, absolutely. So, we're one of the biggest challenges, or, or uh, one of the challenges that we find, especially when we're trying to, I'm using Amazon's term of raising the bar. Um, it's quite scary and daunting to, to to recruit people that are better than us, um, or or if not better than us. So. That's, where, that's ultimately a huge learning advantage for, for when we hire them people and it's getting the, the, the mindset and the buy-in to say that actually if we bring these people in, it will free you up to develop in this area or to progress in, 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 in such an area. And if they're engaged in conversation 
um, with these people at interview stage or when they're talking um, about what they really need from someone it, it, right from that prerequisition. And yeah, I think it will identify some needs from, from some of them existing employees. Um, I think that that's something, so we, one of the, even in the hiring process around the tools and, and the ways you assess people, share the ways you assess with the, the wider team. So this is what we're looking for in this software developer. These are the, the skill sets that we need. And this is the, the kind of benchmark that people were looking at. How you can challenge your team, say, right, how do you feel you, 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 you kind of stand within that um, and, and tool that we're looking at from a, a, a volume perspective which is around kind of personality traits that, that generates a report for the hiring manager around how this person likes to be managed and where they might develop um, where they might need development or how their development needs can be can be um, a, a trained or, or, or improved I suppose um, there's there's a few different which test is that? So we're going with Traitify. Um, so we're looking, we looked at, we looked at loads, and, and the, the, there's loads of great ones. We looked at Brick, um, we looked at um, things like Art Pictures, um, I forget all the names, there's, there's that many that we've, we've, we've looked at now, but um, Traitify is the one we're looking at. We, we're looking at that and, and trialing that because it's it's quite a, a short process it doesn't take too long to do it's mobile enabled um the people that we're targeting aren't going to be disengaged um and it, it kind of aligns to our our culture and values and, and one of our values being fun and um, so it is it's, it's perceived as being more fun i suppose um they're an american company that that haven't um, I don't think they've really come into the UK yet. I think we'll be one of their first, um, at least from a, a pilot perspective. And, and we'll, we'll see where it goes from there. And again, if we do a follow up on this, we can give you a lot more kind of detail into how that's worked. Um, but I think that it's a really great, or, or something of the equivalent is a really great tool to have, um, especially when you've got high volumes to assess. Yeah, sounds good. I think um, there's definitely um, an opportunity for us to have a follow-up event. And I think that would be great if a lot of it was stats-led as well, because it's an evolving journey that you seem to be on. And um, yeah. the marketplace is changing all the time. So, yeah, sounds really good. Um, I might have gone back to isolated hiring by then. <laughs> uh, yeah, a lot. Exactly. We don't know what's going what's to happen, do we? <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm open to that as well. Let's see. But um, no, thank you. Thank you for your time. No, um, are you able to share the slides with me so I can circulate them? Is there certain things yeah, you have to do? Totally. Brilliant. I'll, uh, I'll chat to you sort of um, after the event and stuff and get that sorted. Um, thank you to everyone that attended um, and, and hopefully you can take a lot from this. I'll, I'll make sure that I send out all the slides and stuff to you all. Thanks everyone. Thanks for listening. Cheers. Thanks, Thanks a lot. Thank you. Cheers. Bye. Bye.